Right. Hello, and welcome to the Libri Labra Book Club. Um, today, I am joined by my husband, John, aka Booktube Hubby, and also with Book Club VIP member, Tom. And um, before we jump into things really quick, if you ever want to join us live on our discussions on camera, um, you can do that by becoming a Book Club VIP member on patreon.com slash Libri Labra. And um, we are going to be discussing our September book today, and that was Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. Um, and this author also wrote The Storied Life of A.J. Fikri, which I have on my TBR, so I'm going to check that out at some point. Um, but this book was a book that, that I selected, and... Uh, it is also a book of the month book. So as I've mentioned previously, I'm trying to get my, my achievement by the end of the year. So I'm trying to read all my book of the month books, but um, it also really appealed to me because I knew that it was about two people and their relationship over time and also kind of revolved around gaming. And um, so that, that sounded really interesting and appealed to me. Um, we are going to first cover a little bit about um, our initial thoughts, and then after that, we'll be jumping into spoilers. So if you haven't read the book yet, uh, go read it. It's definitely worth reading, and then come back to listen to the discussion. And I will let you guys know when we're jumping into spoiler territory. But uh, John, you want to go ahead and tell us your initial thoughts? I was just going to say coming back is the important part. Um, the Initial thoughts? I didn't have any because I didn't actually know what I, what I was getting into. No, but when you were done, what did you think oh, initially after you were book? done? That was yes. cute. I really liked the story. It had a lot of, uh, quite a bit of drama, actually. So, and, so cute and, uh, seems like a weird way to describe it. Cute? You said, didn't you, didn't you just say it was cute? <laughs> it was a cute story. I mean, but there was a lot, a lot in it. So, um, well, I guess we can talk about all that later. <laughs> but initial thoughts is just, you know, it was just, uh, I don't even, so yeah, I can't say too much. Um, I know that you listened to the audiobook, and that might have a good impact on why I'm like, you know, so we can talk about that later too. <laughs> all right, Tom, how about you? Initial thoughts? Well, uh, uh, you know, aside from the uh, discussion that we had when it was picked, I, I likewise knew nothing about it. And I said, okay, well, let's give this a shot and see where it goes. Um, I expected something a little more revelatory given the high praise that it's gotten, but it's not a bad book. It's just, it was just, um, I don't know, a bit more average than I was expecting to me, but without giving any. <laughs> it, um, it definitely uh veered from where i expected it to go um so i guess that was surprising and maybe like slightly disappointing um but uh i think at this point we can kind of jump into spoiler territory um so, you know, I know that the whole point of the story was that their friendship was so much more than uh, a sexual relationship or any kind of romantic relationship could have been. But in my mind, I was certain that they were going to get together at some point. And, uh, and I just, I was waiting for that to happen. I was waiting, like every mm -hmm. chapter was like, is this it? Is this when they, when it finally happens? Is this, and it took like quite a few turns that I was not expecting. Um, and then she, she like really changes the tone of some of the sections in the, in the book. I also thought it was interesting that it was that one section that had the separate narrator in the audiobook. Um, when it was like Marx, it was mm -hmm. Marx's voice. That's when they decided to switch up the narrator. Um, right. so that was kind of a surprise too. I didn't yeah. understand that choice there. Um, but it had a surprising amount of 
pop culture references, not just to video games, but to other things. Um, and I really like the way that was done because it never felt like too much to me, you know, like reading, um, ready player one, there are times where it's just like, it just feels like way too much and it feels like they're kind of just crammed in there. Mm. Um, but these references felt a lot more organic and I feel like the characters felt very much like they were in the time as the time was happening, whatever time that was. Um, so <clears throat> I found myself just like Googling a lot of different things being like, wait, was that a real thing? Did that really happen? And they were all, uh, they were all real authentic things like that, that musical that was referenced in there. And, um, the, the ring, I think it was called the ring, the roller rink. I don't know what the name of the, the musical. Was oh, then. oh yeah. The, <laughs> the rink, I think is what it was called. The ring. No, it's something it was... else. It's, it's Stardust or something. I can't remember the name. I'll look it up. Go ahead. <laughs> it was, uh, but it was a Broadway musical about yes. a roller rink and, yes. And I was like, that surely that had to be made up. <laughs> but sure oh, enough, it that's actually, actually true. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so to me, I think pop culture references can sometimes make or break a book, but I think here in this instance, it was they were really well done. Um, Highlight Express is the name of the especially especially all the video game references. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell it, it almost the difference between whether or not it came from a fan who actually had the love, had the appreciation for these things, or someone who just wanted to make sure it was in the in in the material, you know. But like the surprise organic was is probably the better word for it. Um, but it felt like the author was familiar with the content in a way that was beyond just researching it. Um. And so it was a little surprising that someone would have all that knowledge or all that familiarity with all those things. Um, so that was kind of interesting. I mean, maybe she did just research them, but but I think it was it, it was written in such a way that it felt very authentic and very organic, and I thought that was pretty cool. Um, surprisingly, I I cried two times while reading this. And both of them were like very, very early on in the book. Um, I'm surprised so, it's not more. So as time went on, I don't know if I started. Maybe it's when I started listening via audio that it wasn't quite as um, impactful. <clears throat> but um, I don't know. I don't know. I wear like I. I obviously I just I wanted Sadie and Sam to get together, and I'm still kind of like. This, this is a perfect. I mean, honestly, love love stories can't always work out the way you want them to. And I uh, think this is one of the things. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I don't want to mention any names, but I have a candidate that said that's what makes it famous is it doesn't work out for right. the romance. So, so. it's something that goes just... against the grain. Of course, someone's going to notice. Mm -hmm. Their lives were all so messy. Very. Except Marx's. <laughs> he was just kind of chilling. You know what was really funny? That at some point, um, I think it was like a nurse at the hospital assigned them names, and she had assigned Marx the name of Keanu. <laughs> <laughs> And like, and like the more they described Marx, like I could totally see him, like he just had Keanu mm -hmm. vibes. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. Um, was, what, what did you think of um, all the video game stuff? Like, did it, did it, uh, was it nostalgic or, um, did it make you happy or giddy or I know John, you mentioned a couple of times that you felt like some of those games should be made. When like the ideas that she has, the, the characters, what they make out of video games. I mean, one seems a lot like um, a limbo or um, yeah. So uh, the Ichigo, Journey. yeah, the, that one. 
yeah journey that's that's a very good yeah like um they're all really good the, the ideas the concept is great so i can see uh uh, a good marketing thing was it would be to have like an indie de developer start working on some of these. Um, the the single chapter that there was about their company name, I thought that was pretty interesting. The way she kind of told that story, it was it was pretty short, but the way that she was saying that like none of them remem remember who was the person that like actually named it because they all felt they did in different ways mm -hmm. um but uh i think i liked sam's explanation the most in regards to the name unfair games what was um, i think he was saying that like just life in general was, was unfair, unfair. Mm -hmm. right so basically it's dealing with what carves your hand in versus and that's the thing about a video game. They give you a specific, you know, thing to, to run by. And this is, this is, these are your rules. This is how you got to play it. And this is how you got to mm -hmm. do it. So it's a good, kind of a good philosophy in my opinion. I know at some point, you know, cause you try to avoid any conversation about the book we're reading for the month. But at some point you said something like, I feel bad for Sam's mom. And then you didn't elaborate at all. I mean, like, you know, I know what happens to her, but you obviously had something probably more in mind when you had mentioned that. I think it was more uh, along the lines of uh, the kind of actor that she was trying to be and uh, how her life had ended up up until that point. Well, of course, that's, that's where it stops. So um, it's just uh, between her and not they being able to see what her son in, ended up doing after the fact. There's more to it, but it was more along the lines of just that, that her life really didn't, she didn't get to see too much of the glory that she wrought. Now looking back and just thinking of all the things that the characters went through, it's just, um, especially, you know, even though the mom wasn't really a main character, there was still a lot about her in there and mm -hmm. not just the accident but the whole scene like s some of the things are so interesting that i'm like what would make you put that in there like the whole thing about the woman falling from the building in new york like uh, that seems that... like a, a strange i mean i obviously i know how so that would traumatize someone but that just seems like a strange addition to the story i feel like i'm not Kind of, I'm not really too sure on what thread it's playing on, but it has a lot to do with Sam's personality and how he ended up his witnessing that woman do the thing. And then uh, uh, it has a lot to do with um, his mom being named the same name. And yeah, and that was weird too. The same, having the same kind of like an outlook on life and it kind of like kind of molded his as well. Did you guys hear that? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'll be, I'm going to mute this for a second. I'll be right back. Okay. okay. But yeah, it almost seemed like, I, I don't know if we talked about this movie, Everywhere All at Once, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Mm -hmm. But it's like almost like a multiverse thing, like she's meeting different versions of herself. You know, because she meets another Anna Lee, like later on in the book as well. I was like, oh, you're Adelie too. And it's a common name, I guess. But, it's a, but yeah. You, you know, you can't help but, you know, think that, okay, these these are all variations on a theme of what, you know, Adelie is, is supposed to be or what she's supposed to live, which I thought was clever. So. Um, how did you feel about the time jumping? Because there's no real like indication of the time jumping at all. It's more just the way it's described. Um, well, yeah, they, they had to let some time lapse between, you know, like games because they can't obviously be working on like, okay, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, but I mean, I mean more so like, you know, even in the first chapter, they're talking about um, 
Sam and Sadie in the hospital, but they also mm-hmm. throw in like years later when they f- make their most popular game in an article. Well, somebody yeah, well, says like, yeah, I think I think it was told in retrospect, if I recall correctly. It's it's been a couple weeks since I finished it, so. But um, yeah, it, it, it sounded like uh, whoever the narrator was was narrating it from like an almost on. Like an omniscient perspective, so that we mm-hmm. already know what happened. Yeah. They already know what happens in the story, and they tell it that way. So that's how that could coexist, I think. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I, yeah, I saw that it was written in third person, but yeah, omniscient third sounds right. I mean, that's how we. That's how we get. I think that's how we get Marxist Marxist section or just chapter. Because there's no other way to tell that story. Right. Uh, that was that was odd because he was in like this coma state so i wasn't sure like there must have been lines blurring there i wasn't sure like what was fact and what was fiction what was kind of like him in a dreamy haze um so if i understood it correctly at some point he's Mm -hmm. talking about sam being really upset and sam drinking and getting drunk and then he got vomit on his hair. And so that mm-hmm. was actually when he said, oh, I got hot. And that's why he mm-hmm. shaved his head. It was actually because he got drunk the night before and he shaved his head. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because as it, when we when we had the story in real time, he didn't just get go into it. He said, right. He, yeah. He was just no. like, I was hot. I got hot. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about Marxist. Uh, chapter, I think. Oh, right? I mean, I, I, wouldn't you just wash your hair? <laughs> but he said he tried and it wouldn't come out, so he tried to snip it and then he cut. Like what he did, was drunk. He was drunk. What did you eat? <laughs> yeah, he's drunk and cutting his hair dry. What do you, what do you expect? He to like have? burned his hair with stomach acid. Um, but yeah, he ended up like just cutting it. So. I feel like Sam was a very interesting character. He was obviously, you know, not ever wanting to be perceived as disabled or weak or vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And so he hid a lot. And despite the fact that, you know, he hid so much of himself, he was still able to create these intimate connections with Marx and with um, Sadie anyway. Um, But that in itself is interesting because like how do you do all that without allowing yourself to be vulnerable without like revealing parts of yourself like all the parts that he chose to keep hidden Mm -hmm. and his relationship with mark was interesting too because mark's just i guess they just kind of existed and and so much of their relationship was like unspoken like the connection was there but it was just such an unspoken thing like the example they provided of you know mark's leaving a coat in a bag and um yes. yeah uh so it seemed like marks was always helping sam um mm-hmm. doing different things being like you can use my apartment or whatever the case is in, in very subtle ways yes i like that that's one of the things i like about the book the relationship, the unspoken, uh, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm looking out for you, bro. Relationship that they, that he had with them. So, well, but it was, it had to be unspoken because really he wouldn't allow him to do it without. Oh yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it was just told with so much care. I feel like, mm-hmm. like you can really sense how much Marks cared about Sam. I feel like Marx was the coolest dude in this <laughs> in this story. Um, but there is like some perceptions that Sadie had of Sam. And I don't think I ever landed on whether or not they were at her like accurate perceptions or if she just kind of saw him as a villain sometimes. Oh, she did. Yeah, she absolutely did. Um, because he, he felt that she she felt that he took credit, credit yeah for the work without you know i think that and, accentuates the idea that they actually had that kind of relationship as well that wasn't spoken like right. they like they didn't communicate back and forth enough 
to to hash out those things, but they still cared about each other. I think it was almost a guarantee that they ended up clashing the way they did. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 no. no it's just yeah. No, but that's how human beings are. They don't they avoid conflict until it becomes inevitable, and then right. it just blows up, and here we are. You know. But I don't know. I don't know if that's a, a sign of like being a great friend where you can not talk for like six years and then eventually be friends again. But like you would think that you'd be able to manage those situations a little bit better where you don't have to take a six year break from talking to the person or whatever the case is. Well, when you realize that or when you think when you actually have a perception that that person was just using you for for something else, that's yes that's that's upsetting that's not something you're gonna like forgive easily even when you're yeah. talking to somebody especially when you don't let a lot of people in and you let this one person in. it's like and then you find out oh they were doing it for the hours for the thing it's like well yeah you'd be upset <laughs> I, mean, upset? I don't know but I, yeah i totally understand like that was one of the moments where i cried was in the beginning with that whole thing when i found out that she was doing those um community service hours or yeah. whatever i was like no now granted you know they, they did mention that you know she didn't have to do the 600 hours right <laughs> right, right. right. You know? but it's off the 60. yeah so but you know, obviously, Sam didn't care about that. The fact was that it just cast what was the goings on in a bad light. So, I think I gasped though when he ended up in the hospital again after like walking her to Dove's place, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think it was like eight fifteen, and he was like, "Oh, visiting hours end at nine. You guys won't make it here in time." And then he was like, mm -hmm. "You definitely won't be able to get your volunteer sheet." Like filled out yeah. or available before that. Yeah, I was like, he's, wow. That's still on his mind, clearly. <laughs> yeah, like, we haven't quite geez. buried the hatchet yet on that. Goodness. You know, that's how things go sometimes. I don't know. I don't know. Like, there's just. But 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 the thing is though they had these subtle hints though as their relationship because you know that when they were talking about oh you died of dysentery and you know Alice was claiming oh yeah we always did that it's like well we always you know she and uh, Sam would that, that was their line it's like well clearly they are very close you know because you know they're sharing some of the same experiences so. It seemed like Sadie, like obviously the types of games they wanted to make were slightly different or maybe like the purpose or what they expected to do with them. Um, you know, it seemed like she just wanted to focus on making these uh, more artsy, artsy games, which, mm -hmm. you know, it's totally fine. But I feel like if you are going to go that route, then you have to accept that it might not be the most popular that you might not get a huge audience but she also seemed so disappointed when she took the risks that she did making the games that she made mm -hmm. um so i don't know i, I go ahead I was, I I was just saying, go ahead. <laughs> you could go ahead no i was just saying second. especially after um, it came out that her part of that that where they made she made half and he made half, and his was the more popular half. Mm -hmm. So, what they uh, their types of games show, I think, is the contrast between the two, two personalities. Is you have the one that's that's uh, a little bit more open and and free about uh, the expression. But then when it's actually finally out there, she feels bad about it. And then you have the other who is very cold up and tight and he, he's, he's very eccentric. And then when he finally lets out a little bit, he gets hurt. So mm -hmm. we, we have the, the two um, the, the, the two contrasting. So uh, the ones that actually meet up later again, I think it's an interesting thread. Like you have the, uh, you have the, the idea that 
she makes games one way, he makes them the other, but and uh, she makes the awesome game to begin with, going by you know uh, uh, his the, the they're both ideas, the parameters, the platformer was mm-hmm. very good most, and it was considered it was hers, but it was he took credit, so that actually played a role in uh, not only the types Did of games they really made. take credit though, like no. he didn't no he didn't because he didn't speak up. But he, well, he did, did because he, he was the one who did the right. promotional tours and such. So his name is always associated with the game. Right. He didn't actually take credit. It was just a matter of public right. opinion, public. Yeah. Public when, when they when they see the when they see the game out in the press, who's who's talking about it? It's Sam. So people associate it with him rather than her. But I think the story playing on their emotions about the games and then with each other is kind of where, where I guess the thread was the best word I used. Where the threads lie. Mm-hmm. Because it was a heavy contrast between the two, but they seemed so similar. Mm-hmm. Is that not? What do you? Think I know. I'm just. I was just thinking about how much I disliked Dove as a character. <laughs> He's meant to be disliked. <clears throat> but uh. I mean, I know she eventually got with got together with Marx, and that's a whole other discussion. But I was thinking, Jesus Christ, what shitty tasting guys! I mean, you have to. This is what you pick, you know. And here we are. Well, well, uh, that again, that's about her personality. It's sorry, there's a lot there. <laughs> um, there was like one section where I think it was when Marx met Dove, and he's describing. Uh, what Dove smelled like and dressed like, and mm-hmm. and just how much he detested him, and I just thought it was really funny. I don't know. I just thought like, like the way his scent was described and how it didn't go away, and how it was like a combination of like patchouli and something else. I don't know. I just thought it was really funny. I had to wonder if that wasn't like a, a stab at. Maybe some of the old, early game developers, like John Carmack, maybe that's how they exact or you know, actually dressed, you know. So I mean, game developers when they spend a lot of time just straight developing, if they have to have the mind mm-hmm. to sit there for hours, they don't wash, they don't, so they cover them, they cover up the smell oh, when they go yeah. out to meet people. Like and Cologne it's not and right. Well, I mean, even then, what Dove? He seemed like a uh, was he was he was Israeli. Mm. So I'm pretty sure spice and and you know like I I know a lot of uh, European they, they wear like so much of what they they own it's mm-hmm. like they they took a bath in it before going out I don't understand mm-hmm. it. not just Europe but I mean like right I don't even know what's what the the cologne is but there's a few people that come mm-hmm. in here with with a certain type of cologne and it just it lingers it is it is a good mm-hmm. word it lingers. Mm-hmm not bad just lingers mm-hmm. their their whole relationship ended up being pretty strange i feel like i mean starting from like it being a, a teacher student relationship to him being yeah. married and having a kid and then like that s m stuff um it was just a lot there was a lot of of stuff that happened <clears throat> And um, yeah, Marx and Sam noticed, you know, the Marx, and they were they, they don't quite approach her until much, much later about it. Yeah, that's. Mm, I'm sorry, if my best friend had freaking like cuts and bruises all over the wrists, I'd be like, "Hey, what the hell is that?" Mm-hmm. Interesting. I know that like one of the reasons Sadie had been mad was because she felt like Sam had known everything that was going on and still made her reach out to Dove for the Ulysses yes. engine. Yes. See, was there malice there? I don't think there was. I don't think he. I don't think he did it for an imagine of like, oh, I just want his engine. I don't want to build my own because they felt like you know I felt like they they had the idea they were going to do that anyway, but the engine was just perfect for it and he felt he was he was playing the game and he was like oh my god this would be great 
And then instead of it being just a bright idea happened at a time, she was like, she blamed him for it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he sent her back to Dove. Yeah. Yeah, because she oh, had already see, broken hey, up with him and she, she had gone through a period of depression. Right. That's right. That's right. She didn't have to deal with Dove again. Mm. Right. Okay, I see. I can see the hatred there now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, I guess. Yes. But like... I don't know. There was just a lot of times where she felt like Sam did these horrible things, and and I mean, I don't, I don't think Sam was doing the horrible things. Like, hmm. like it was just her perception. But but but, uh, you know, apart, you know, perceptions aside, you know, Sam had to have understood what this meant. Her going to Dove after. No, well, yeah, but I thought he was saying that he didn't. He didn't know that they had had a relationship at that time. He knew, but I don't think he knew the specifics. I don't so, think he knew that it was bad, that it was a breakup, that all this happened. I think he just knew that there was a relationship, it was, mm -hmm. or, or that it was still going on. Or I don't know. She mm -hmm. worked with him, right? So who? who? Doe. No, that was her teacher. I mean, I guess. So you still end up working. You with guess. Them, I what do you I, mean? I guess. No, no, no. I'm <laughs> saying, like, you're, still, you're still learning from your teacher. You still end up doing work with them. But I'm just, mm -hmm. I guess I'm just using the wrong word. But I mean, I don't know if I would want to be, well, tied. Because he ended up getting involved with their first game. And he, he I feel like he kind of took more credit for things than than sam ever did you know because they used his engine understandably mm -hmm. but but in an article he goes on this whole rant about how people should build their own engines yes <laughs> Hint. Um, but, but honestly and from those point of view it's like oh hey look you know i don't have to do any work here's my engine i'll get money from it right if nothing else you know if it succeeds and it does so that's a win-win for him. You know, and even even Sadie had to say, uh, you know, the way he did some of the his visual effects is like it was just perfect. You know. So it was the right tool for the right job, but it was the getting of the tool which she objected to, which you know I could totally understand. So I mean she didn't have to. She could have True. just said no. True. And then that even that was even said too. Mm -hmm. So I get it. Yeah, they could balance both sides out and say, okay, pros and cons, and but yet yeah, this is what happened. So right. And she resented him is, quite rightfully so it for it. Yeah. Oh man. Well, uh, rightfully from her perspective. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. From her perspective, yeah. You son of a bitch. Hey, so he was just like, there. what did I do? Knowing what was, knowing what was going to happen, you know. So. Hmm. And, but then so again. Saying, but, are right. you saying that they, that they actually explained that he knew that she was going to end up going through the same crap with Dove again? I. Well, I, if I recall correctly, it's been, like I said, it's been a couple of weeks since I finished the book, but. If I recall correctly, it was clear that Sadie was not resist not necessarily resisting, but it was obvious she didn't want to do it. <laughs> and, you know, she didn't say why, probably, but she said, yeah, she, it was obvious she didn't want to do it. But they said, oh, no, this is important. And, you know, then she actually went and did, went ahead and did it. So, but, but, you know, like I said, later on, they mentioned like the Mars and such. That had to have been going on or have gone on, you know, before this conversation about getting the engine, so you know. she was so headstrong though about wanting to make her own engine. Like I'm kind of surprised mm -hmm. that she right decided to do that. No, except that she tried, and then she's like, "Holy shit, this is a lot of work." <laughs> yeah, you know, like I mean, know, much more than she bargained for. Yeah, so. And then just take one off the shelf and say, okay, here we go. And let's run with it. So, so much easier, I know. Mm -hmm. Didn't you try to make something through with Unreal, Des? A long uh, time ago? Yeah, we made some 
textures, so we kind of like reskinned it, and we mm-hmm. made we made an Unreal map that looked like uh, Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers. So it's so much easier when the uh, the the materials already exist for you to put everything together. So when you actually have to make the engine to put the materials together, it's. I mean, I can't even imagine what's involved in that, like (laughs) the coding and the developing and the testing and everything else. Um, But the, I don't know. I still like, I just keep thinking about Marx. I feel like he deserved better. (laughs) Like, uh, he had his, it seemed like he had his shit all together. Mm-hmm. And uh, and also in regards to like how he wanted to calmly de-escalate the situation that mm-hmm. like that was super brave but also ballsy and just like mm-hmm. oh yeah like yeah. that whole thing was just I definitely don't think I was expecting that but it's still it's still like none of the story went the way i was expecting because like even when that happened i was like oh but now she's gonna have a kid and so surely sam is gonna step in now (laughs) but that never happened but there there were some things which i was like okay that were kind of telegraphed but she like doubled down and like made it explicit like when um when they oh Marx and Sadie is going to Japan. What do we think is going to happen? Well, of course it does. But, you know, she comes right out and says so. And the mom says, so are you boyfriend and girlfriend? And it's like, well, clearly that's what's going to be the uh, end result here. But you know. With Marx? Yeah, with Marx. Mm, okay. Because I, like, I remember that they, 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 weren't, they specified how much he was such a free spirit, but she was the one that tied him down. Right. I um yeah, as soon as they decided to go on that trip together, I was like, oh no. Yeah. Um I just I didn't want it to happen, even when like Marx was like, Hey, so how do you feel about Sadie? Because I was thinking about asking her out. Oh yeah, that was a long time before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I was like, I I thought maybe because then he ended up with Zoe. Yep. For a bit. Um, so Zoe broke up with him like twice, I guess. Hmm. Dang. <laughs> but, but they still made him sound like he was the, the serial dater, I guess. Well, he's good looking. I mean, you know, he's obviously got actor, like actor level good looks. Yeah. You know, so he can, he, and he's charming and, you know, he's intelligent. Of course. Yeah. But he's boring, apparently. <laughs> Well, he gets bored easily, yes. But. <laughs> no, I think Sam's whole thing was like, how could you like Marx because he's boring? And then well, he, it's surface it's level. It's like, what was it? Yeah, Taylor but that could be horses? resentful. That could be resentful. To, resentment, too. It may not necessarily oh, yeah, be true. Because so. he knew he, he, he loved Sadie the whole time, but mm-hmm. he just watched her date other people instead of speaking mm-hmm. up. We wouldn't have a story. We'd have a very different story. Otherwise, we would, yeah, we would have a very different story. But but to his credit, you know, he uh, developed that entire game, basically to bring her out of her shell after Marx's passing. You know, now that's crazy too, because those types of games take years to make. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, also too, there's like the privacy issues. You know, he used her IP to track her down, and you know, yeah, make very oh, specific, that was wicked kind of stalker. Yeah, but but you know, I don't know. He named his character was Edna da- Daedalus, and you know, Daedalus of course is is the, Icarus's great, dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but he's also he also is the was the inventor. He's also the inventor of the Minotaur's maze, and it's like. I would think if Sadie was in her right mind, she would say, "Hey, I know you." And then they and like he, they try to connect about making games together. And it's like this is you know, 
if Sadie was in her right mind, she'd say, hey, you're so-and-so, you know, but she didn't. So, you know, it's funny because, like, I remembered that uh, Daedalus had made <laughs> the outfit for um, Adrienne, uh, Ariadne's mom, mm-hmm. the, the cow outfit, but I do oh, not yeah. remember that he it was the creator of the maze. Yeah, yeah, so like, yeah, the really big thing about the book, yeah. <laughs> Which is about the Minotaur. No, I'm kidding. That's funny. So that, yeah. Because I yeah. know later on, I think it was Dove that was like, it mm-hmm. was obviously him. Like, duh. It was obvious. Yeah. You know. Right. And, and was it the other friend character who had, had characteristics of uh, Marx? It's like, because he had been married multiple times. And, you know, so it's clear if you, if you knew the backstory, you know, okay, this is what he's drawing from. But, Clearly, Sadie wasn't in the right mind to pick that, pick up on that. So it's like he's hiding in plain sight, waiting for her to notice. So, I didn't know the cow had that much of reference. Jesus. Okay. Hmm? What? <laughs> Wasn't there a cow reference in there somewhere? I, I don't. I, I don't remember a cow reference. I'm going to go back like... and look now because I, I remember okay. someone made a comment, and I'm like, wait a minute. Now that you said the the Daedalus's outfit yeah, the, comment, I have to go back and see if it actually that wasn't has to mentioned. Do with that scene or not? It, no, that wasn't. No, no, mentioned, no, no, no. It wasn't. But that was that, that was, was all I remembered about Daedalus. Mm-hmm. I didn't make the oh, connection okay. to the maze, right. which, which I understand that somewhere. connection to uh, to Sam. I just don't know if it was in the, that book or not. <laughs> but. Um... Oh, See, no, reading books no. is fun. You get to... <laughs> it was in, it was in the, the voiceover voice acting one. Mm. There was a cow oh. mentioned there. Never mind. There's um just so many games and other stories mm-hmm. that were mentioned in here. And like I feel like I I do want to go back and reread this and maybe annotate it because I thought there was several mm-hmm. like really good quotes. That I appreciated and that I enjoyed. Um, I don't know. I don't know what what else to, where else to lead the conversation. Well, um, my my favorite chapter was the one with Marx, where he was in the coma apparently. And the way I understood this, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that he was actually the bird. Who gets killed, then he becomes Marx, and then he becomes the bird again, like afterwards. It's like, yeah. That's right? what it seemed like. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Yeah, plus he, um, what was it? Oh. Yeah, the bird he was was the one from the pattern, the strawberry thief. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know, yeah, that, like, that's what it sounded like. Yeah, that tied everything together. I thought, oh, that, that was really well done. So, I'm guessing that's what Zevin means by tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. You just, you know, reincarnate or re invis, you know, remake yourself into something new. So, I mean, is that Sam an actual, that. is tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow a reference to Shakespearean lore? It was, it was a reference to some Shakespeare thing, some, okay. Like some. How uh, would start, Tom? Was that what you're getting to? No, but <laughs> no, my was it was like it was just more, more like the little thing of being eternal and just reinventing yourself, like you know, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, sort of a thing. Yeah. So let's see. Um. Well, because it was mentioned that when they were trying to come up with names for the company that Marx had actually wanted to call the game company tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow because of that um, Shakespeare reference. And mm. and they were like, what does that have to do with gaming? Because he like recited the verses or whatever. And he was responding. like... Yeah, and he was like, don't you get it? That's like that's absolutely like a video game. You always have another chance to go yep. back to beat your score to, you know. Yes, that's what yeah. I mean. And yeah, the, apparently this, it's a, from a speech from Macbeth. I'm not going to read it, but it's it's out there. Right. 
Yeah. So. But yeah, you know, that's what it seemed like, you know, because, you know, they become different people, but yet they're, they're the same in a sense, too. So. Sorry, I'm yawning. It's uh, my energy level dropped. <laughs> oh. You need a Snickers bar. We didn't get enough sleep I, ooh, last night. It's a lot of sugar, though. Oh, that's true. <laughs> well, that's what um, it's for. Yeah, yes. right? <laughs> for that instant energy. Let's see, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, so, I like but, right but I don't know. I, I felt kind of, I don't know, at least a little disappointed that, like, oh, Sam has this burning love, unrequited love for Sadie. It's like, oh, come on, this is straight out of like Rowan Rom Com 101 here. You know, that's like, I was expecting a little something based on what I'd heard, like I said, a little more revelatory, but like, it's like, after like maybe half the novel and then right until. They said, oh, well, I've been in love with her all this time. It's like, oh, great. This is, you know, and I get it, but still, it was kind of a letdown. And that's the kind of thing. It's like, you know, they they, they did have a close relationship in the sense that, you know, they were, they allow, they allowed each other to come in in the creative process, which is, in a sense, giving birth, you know. Even if they want to make two different, you know, wildly different things, you know, and to Sadie's credit, she does make the London-esque uh, Shakespearean related game after, you know, like the third attempt, which, which, you know, goes to show you, it becomes a big hit and it's like, oh, this will never fly, but yet it does. So who the hell knows? I think that's we're seeing that a lot lately in video games. There's a lot of a lot of things mm -hmm. are coming out now that I would have been like, who likes this? But it's got mm -hmm. a base. Yeah. So I mean, if it's put it out there, man, you're still gonna make money. Shoot. Yeah. And we're just, you know, just try it and see if it works out. You know. I mean there's a lot of games I see, oh well, I know that's definitely not for me, but it's, somebody's liking it. Right. It's on the top ten, so more power to them. That's like, you know, a friend of mine texted me about Amish romance novels. And it's like, I'm not sure why they exist, but somebody likes them. <laughs> more power to them. Go for it. The Amish. Yeah, I, I would never read them, but hey, I'm glad they exist because somebody wants to read them. So go for it. Right. Ooh. Cold. Um, I, I can imagine when making something big that mm -hmm. you have to sell to someone, mm -hmm. it just gets really hard in regards to making the decisions in regards to what kind of changes need to be made, what kind of changes you're willing to make. Um, mm -hmm. like it was interesting seeing who offered them money for Ichigo mm -hmm. and, and where they decided to go with it. Yeah. And... Um, I feel like in instances like that, it seemed like Sadie was always the one sacrificing, like sacrificing her, her, her well, thoughts and her integrity. And well, well um, she was the artist of the bunch, you know. She's like, you know, everybody wants to make another, another in Ichigo, Ichigo. and she was like, no, I don't want to make, <laughs> you know? which I totally get. But you know, hey, this thing that made you money, you know, we'll do it again. <laughs> yeah, do it again. She's like, I did that already. Next. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. But it, it's also funny to me that, you know, they have the, both of them have these very fond memories of the game, um, the Oregon Trail, which is obviously not the best graphics, not the best thing, by especially by modern standards. But, you know, it, they obviously love the game. So, you know. I thought that was interesting as well. You know, they may be they may be making modern games, and yeah, you know, they reach a point where it's like, okay, well, we know that the Ichigo engine isn't going to fly. We need to make a new one, you know, that shows the passage of the time. But you know, I, I think there's something to be said for games like the gameplay and such, apart from the visuals and the audios that will lure people in and get them to play. So. I want to know why 35 years later, I'm just now finding out why I always died in Oregon Trail. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 
the fact that if you shoot the bison and you take the meat from the bison, you can't eat it fast enough before it goes bad. That's why you died of dysentery. <laughs> I have to run back now. I got to play Oregon Trail. <laughs> I like this. You know what? I... <laughs> I feel like it, is mine. No, I'm I feel like that game gets referenced so much that at some point I was like, "Why is everybody talking about this?" And I tried to play it, and I just yeah di- it didn't is, get it. It is the classic that everybody was when game when computers first hit the classrooms. You had mm-hmm. artillery, you had um, Odell Lake, and you had Oregon Trail. Mm-hmm. And Odell Lake was basically, you're this fish. This fish is coming up. Do you want to eat it or run away? And if you chose eat it and it was bigger than you, you died. <laughs> so, and then Oregon Trail was probably the most sophisticated game of the time mm-hmm. back then because of, you know, what it had in it. And really all it was was pixels. And you, you I mean... It yeah. told a story more than you played a game. Mm-hmm. You get to choose like specific things, and you got to move a guy around and shoot a a, a bullet that moved this fast across the screen <laughs> at a at a at an animal that was running across the screen too. So, I mean, you either ate a couple squirrels or you shot a bison and died. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! Classic is like an understatement. Like antique, no, it has to be classic because if you, you go back to a classic book, it's still a classic. I mean, it's all the old ones, and it's still good. Well, well, to your point, John, um, you know, the game reminded me it said, uh, "Well, what if you smoked the meat? It would be, you know, be, you know like maybe that's an upgrade that you could get, <laughs> and you just never got it." So everything. So that's and that's what they talk about. The new in the book. Yeah. That's like Oregon Trail 2.0, but I'm just saying that's a part <laughs> of the thing. Like you maybe missed the mechanic, like a really important mechanic, and now right. you know it's like, oh, and you know, it makes the game a whole lot easier. Yep. So he's right. Like part of me, like a very, very small part of me wants to try to play it again, but I know I'll probably get tired in like five minutes. They they there's a new remastered version. Really, it might, be, it might be better. I don't know if they changed anything about it. I don't know if they added anything. Like down. remastered, like for up. Xbox. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, just like on I, the I like someone, someone actually remade it. I don't want to find out. That's funny. That'd be interesting. Let's see. Let's see if it's on Steam. <laughs> yeah, that New seems Oregon like the trail place. game. Uh, no, unfortunately not. The Oregon Trail by Game Law. I think it's a PC game. I don't. I didn't oh, see no. this game. It's on Apple Arcade. Oh, there you go. It's on the App Store. So if you have an iPad, iPad or iPod or uh, iPhone. Is this the the 2011 that? version? It looks like it. The Oregon Trail American Settler well, 2011. You, you dang sure don't want the 1983 dang version. Dang sure. Thank you. You're getting pulled into the game. Well, partner, you got to play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that, but that's the thing. You know, going, going to, um, you know, going back to Ichigo's that they made. It, it talks, you know, from the game making perspective. You want something in the sequel that is d- different but not so different that it can't be recognized as a sequel to the previous game and that is such a fine line to, <laughs> to try it's like yeah god love you, you it's know? too hard to actually walk down that line that's the reason why game developers do make changes each time just to mm-hmm. add to it because of that line right and the only thing that has the word Ichigo in it that is coming up on any of searches is the, the anime called Bleach. Mm. Oh, I, d- I did see that because I think I looked that up too. I was really hoping that might have been a game, but no. Yeah, that was a that was a while ago. <laughs> no, they use they only use the ones for context. So, you know, I say rattle them Oh, I played that one. Yeah, I played. I know of that one. I didn't play it, but right. But honestly, you know, the, 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 go ahead. the progress, like, from... Go ahead. 
I was just say that they, 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 at least the the games that they mentioned, um, I, I played majority of them, so I knew. Yeah, them, yeah. It's like, oh, I know that <laughs> one. Yeah, right. No, but saying? it's just interesting, you know, going like back in the day, you know, dating myself now. Zork and such were like, this is great. This is you know, the rest that we can do, you know. But and now looking at it now, we'll see how far we've come. It's like, my gosh, just incredible. If you, if you even tell somebody what a text based RPG is, they look at you with mm-hmm. like you got four heads. Mm-hmm. What, what do you mean, text based? Mm-hmm. You have to type in your commands it's, and, it's, have, and it yeah. tells you what your problem is. <laughs> but it's but 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 then again, you know, you have these, these things like you know, I. Like EverQuest and EverQuest Two, and even uh, World of Warcraft, where they are coming up with these classic servers, where it's the game as it was when it first came out. So oh. there's nostalgia. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's nostalgia for the original products, good, better, and different. It's true. So it's a, it's a weird a hobby. This difference. gaming thing. What's that? Yeah, it's a very big difference. How long has World of Warcraft been a thing? At least twenty years, right? Well, I'll, well, I know EverQuest because you know they they started in nineteen ninety nine, and I play and I started playing like around that time. And it's like I, I I still get like oh here's EverQuest two with its new expansion. It's like holy crap, <laughs> it's still around, you know. And I think EverQuest is as well. I don't know if they're releasing expansions for it. There's still people playing it. So, I mean, okay. Yeah, Warcraft was announced in two thousand one. Yeah, I knew it came like shortly thereafter, but not. But yeah, I mean they've been around for what twenty some years, and people are still playing them. So, but the fact and, that what would make me want to go back and play a game that was twenty years old has to be um, a really big nostalgic bump. You know what I'm saying? Yes, but also too. It's like, you know, oh, this game was really good. Then you go to play it. Oh, my God, this is awful. <laughs> I remember this game being the best thing Yeah, the world. yeah. Cool. exactly. I can't play this anymore. So, well, yeah. Don't ever meet your heroes, I guess, in, in this sense. Oh, oh wow. So, Zelda, Zelda 2 was, like, mm-hmm. one of my favorite games growing up. And I know not that long ago mm-hmm. I, I wanted to play it. And that shit was hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that, is that like, one of the ones that's on the Ninten- the classic Nintendo that we got? Or did we, how did we get that? How did we get that? I think it might be on the Switch, maybe. Oh, okay, yeah. that would make sense. I think. Uh, uh, excuse me for a moment. I got to run out of the restroom. I'll be right back. Okay. You can get any talking. <laughs> no, it's just weird that what what uh, hooks the house imagination and look like Angry Birds. It's just a game about shooting birds at <laughs> hooray you know well, millions the story of there is funny yeah but you know nobody plays her for the story and she, you know, just, <laughs> just like call of duty and everything else it's like nobody cares about the story but yeah. but it's just interesting you know and uh, to have like how do you even gauge that it's like you know when you want to make something like from sadie's point of view it's like and your interests are so rarefied it's like you know i don't know how to tell you this but i don't think this can fly <laughs> But yet it does. But yet it does in, in the book, you know. So, I mean, her game sounded really fascinating to me. Mm-hmm. Even that last one, that Masters of the whatever. I oh yeah, the, the Elizabethan Theater. Yeah, Master of the Revels. That's what it is. So, but um, question I had, uh, and they don't really go into it in the novel. Um, do you think Sadie was depressed? Like clinically, clinically depressed, like. yeah. Um, I didn't think so, but the way she kind of always like it seemed like she always saw things in a negative light. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe, and maybe like you know, there were just more severe days or months than, mm-hmm. but maybe. Because now, granted, the most egregious examples were when she, you know, broke up with Dove and also when Marks died. So totally understandable. But the way it was painted to me was that it was serious. Like this was like affecting her health and her life. You know, I mean, there's grieving, but then there's whatever she was going through, and they never really defined it or you know, got into it. Which I suppose that's that's the way depression would work in real life. 
you know, like all of a sudden she disappears and then, hey, where are you? And Well, I know that like, and it wasn't a very deep explanation, but, you know, because it seemed like her not showering for months and staying in bed and, you know, yeah, sleeping all the time I mean. over, over the breakup, that seemed very like is that possible after a breakup? Sure. But it, it, it almost seemed a little bit too much until later right. on, I believe they explained that she had been pregnant. She was pregnant during that breakup. And so Correct. she had an abortion and that's, that's where all of that. Mm, okay. Okay. That's um, right. Yeah. <clears throat> but she just didn't tell anybody about that. She lied to her roommate Correct. and said she was just depressed because she broke up with him. Mm -hmm. so so that okay, explanation right. made yes, fair enough. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so but um i don't know if either of you have any more to add if not we can do final thoughts mm -hmm. good. i'm good would you i guess my final question is would you read anything else by this author well i oh. have well the life of h.a fickery so you do okay yeah. Because I may not need that at some point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seems but it's like... always on sale for anything. No, I mean I, I liked it. Yeah, it was a good book. I I was entertained, put it that way. <laughs> so Okay. John, you wanna do your I reading and final it. thoughts? It wasn't amazing, but I'll give it a four stars. Um I definitely do like it and I and I, you're right, I think it is up there with the all around today is one of my favorites, but it's not it fell a little short, but I can't, I can't put my finger on where, mm -hmm. like it's, uh, and honestly, that might actually have to do with the narrator, not the book itself. Mm -hmm. And then my overall feeling about everything isn't like, yeah, that was amazing, but I, the story was great. So I can't, uh, I do wish to uh, reread it because I know there's a couple things, a couple of threads that I missed that I'd like to pick up on, but uh, it'll be uh probably revisited later on hmm. how about you tom i give it three stars like i said it was entertaining if it had more stuff like you know marx's chapter i would have that would have boosted the ratings but you know it was it was good i mean like i said i was entertained and held my interest so three stars i feel like um you know just because you can't do half stars on goodreads i feel like i would probably <laughs> give this like a 4.5 so not mm -hmm. quite a five but probably just gonna put a five on goodreads because i would round up mm -hmm. um and and i think you know what crosses over for me from like a three to a four is just whether or not i would recommend it to people you know because if mm -hmm. i read a, a three-star book i enjoyed it while i was reading it it was a good story but i don't normally like recommend it to people That's so true. um but but i do enjoy books and stories that you know incorporate video games and video game culture and stuff like that mm -hmm. and so so i think that that's what makes it higher for me because there's still not a ton of those um you know there are some but i don't think there's like a ton so when i come across one i think mm -hmm. it's pretty cool and i value that so i would say 4.5 rounded up to a five um, and then for October, we will be reading If We Were Villains by ML, ML yeah. Rio. And I have the synopsis pulled up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't want to hear it. Okay, let me no, see if I can like. You can, you, can, you, can you can tell everybody. Uh, let me see. It says. A decade ago, Oliver is one of seven young Shakespearean actors at Delisher Classical Conservatory, a place of keen ambition and fierce competition. In this secluded world of firelight and leather-bound books, Oliver and his friends play the same roles on stage and off. Hero, villain, tyrant, temptress, ingenue, and extras. But in their fourth and final year, good nature rivalries turn ugly, and on the opening night, real violence invades the students' world of make-believe. In the morning, the four years find themselves facing their very own tragedy and their greatest acting challenge yet, convincing the police, each other, and themselves that they are innocent. Oh, dang. 
<laughs> so, so you so Harry Potter <laughs> for actors. You um, you nominated this. Uh, I did. Yeah. So, but I think it'll make a good a good October thriller read. I think. Mm-hmm. So, did you start it yet, John? No. Okay. Well, we do have the audiobook that's available. So. Okay. I'll knock it out. All right. Well, so once again, that's what we're reading. We're reading If We Were Villains by ML Rio um, for October. And, you know, as soon as we have that scheduled, we will, I will put that on, on the YouTube page. But if you've made it this far, thanks again for joining us. And if you ever want to join us on screen, you can do that by becoming a book club VIP member on patreon.com slash Libri Labra. But um, hopefully I'll see you guys next time. So bye. Bye guys.